I would like to start off with, with a question myself. This is for both of them. The question is, you know, you have written this, uh, this extraordinary book, it's a tremendous labor of love. But is it really meant any difference in the academia? Or are the scholars simply ignoring the book and doing whatever they are doing? No. Okay. Is, is the book making any difference within the academia? That's my question. So who would like to Um, this, it's a very good question and the correct way for me to answer that would be to say the difference is entirely negative. Of course they're not going to embrace the book and say look, 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 we were robbing the this government and the university blind, we were making up science, so they're not going to come out and be in favor of the book in that sense. But negatively, you see within the last year the kinds of things people can say, the kinds of things they do say, has changed dramatically. No one wants to be brought into proximity with anti-Semitism. It's the end of the academic career. So once these things are exposed, once this logic is revealed, they can't continue in the way they were. The second level at which they can't continue is they now know if they come and say, oh, this verse of the Bhagavad Gita doesn't belong there, they know Vishwa and I will be reading their work. In our next article, we will write an entire reputation and expose their logic. So not only can they be politically damaged, but they can lose intellectual credibility because we now, look, this game continued because everyone had agreed to play. No one said, you know, if, you know the story of the emperor's new clothes. No one said the emperor is naked. His arguments don't work. We are the first people who broke ranks. You saw all the citations from Indian authors. They were playing the game of saying the Bhagavad Gita is bad, the Bhagavad Gita doesn't exist, and so on. Once two people break ranks and say, we will call you out on your argument, we will call your bluff, they can't do it anymore. And the final way it has changed is, outside of Indology, we have historians, students of German studies, and professors of Jewish studies, and they have discovered our book, and they've been writing to us and saying, this is enormous and this is massive, and we are using it to teach our courses. So Indology will be sidelined and excluded with all the other departments, history, philosophy, German studies, Je Jewish studies, they turn on the ideologists and say, what are you doing? And that argument will destroy them. Thank you. Uh, we know that uh, Dr. Rajin Mahmoudra has been doing uh, good, uh, good work in, in uh, defending our uh, Hinduism as such. So do you have any ideas with him or having uh, joint conferences with him or uh, what? We. The question. We have the greatest respect for Rajiv Mahopra, uh, but sometimes you have to, it does not help to put everybody in the same boat. Yesterday when we were flying together, I told Joy, this is probably the last time we are flying together because if the plane crashes, one of us should be alive to carry on this work. So, with Rajiv Mahopra and our work, I'm only going to say, in the Mahabharata, in the Virata Pandan, there is an Uttara Bodhrahana and a Dakshina Bodhrahana. That's all I have to say. Well, I think uh, the point, make the point, yeah. you know, I would put it this way. Rajiv Malhotra is doing ex exceptional work, but outside the academy. And that's creating enormous awareness amongst the Hindu community. So they are, they are making arguments inside the academy, contesting the academic perspectives, which is very important. Uh, and that is a very important distinction. But the uh, enemies yes. are, uh, are found, uh, the enemies are the same, right, for both, right? I mean, we have to. I mean, yeah. They, My enemies are anybody who will not let me worship Ganesha, will not let me eat my Nadu. Will not let me read my text according to the teachings of my Acharyas. If you mess with me, I'm willing to give up my job, my career, my life. I will spend every, I have been spending every night and every day dismantling that work. My name is Ravon. This question is about the Bentley Donegan. You know, when the book was banned, apparently the book actually became much more popular. So my question is, when I see Western discourse, 
it mostly centers around caste. And that is what drives up people and increases the popularity. So how do you, how do we deal with that? The discourse is always that Hindus and caste, Hindus and caste. And given these sheer numbers of what you would call quote unquote non brahmins and I don't mean to get into a caste debate here, don't you think that's at the root of Western ideology? They are playing upon that caste division. How do you deal with that? If the problem is divide and rule, then the solution is unite and conquer. So, in a way, we have to pool our resources. We have to help people like Shindeji and Kalyan uh, here and everywhere promoting good work, promoting. Look, before we appeared on the scene, there was Wendy just, just doing her thing. There was nothing for us to do except to hate her. But now we have better scholarship. Myself, Joy, Surit, there's already three generations. Shindeji and Kalyan talked about the Center for uh, Indian Studies at the uh, Graduate Theological Union. So let's all focus now less on Wendy because even banning her books just increases uh, her sales. So instead, let's put all our work into protecting the text, protecting dharma, explaining dharma, organizing on a community level, talking to people about this stuff. If you tell 10 people about the day science, those 10 people will tell another 10. And that's the way to go, I think. Uh, the, the, these arguments have been constructed in such a way that to play the game is to lose the game. The best way is just to, just to turn around and beat them up. Which leads to violence. 
So, does that answer your question in some way? It does. Yeah. Yeah, so Hegel is someone we're taking on now. So, so we're trying to dismantle uh, the progressive logic and the optimism of Hegel. Here we follow Nietzsche. Nietzsche also did this. Thank you.